morning. Uh, welcome to the August 5th Veterans Memorial Island Advisory Committee meeting. Um, and uh, welcome to the brunt of summer. And um, uh, I just would like to say to everybody looking and viewing, um, I hope you're uh, in a cool place and enjoy the early morning uh, uh, temperatures because I'm sure it's going to heat up by the rest of the day. Um, so let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Barb, could you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Um, the 1st of July minutes for the last meeting was uh, sent out uh, via email. Uh, are there recommendations for any changes to those uh, upon review? Mm -hmm. Make a motion we accept as written. Second. Well, I've got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. Yeah, I, I've got. Before we jump there, yes. Oh. I do have two uh, uh, minor uh, recommendations uh, that need to be addressed. On page three, um, if you look about halfway down, um, it, it's talking about the uh, DD 214 and, and then the report of casualty certificate. Uh, the last sentence there says um, that a form DD a form DD 214, which is a release from active duty, is not issued for a casualty. That's correct. So a casualty report should be accepted um, as a proper form of uh, verification. Um, I just would like to, instead of that, uh, uh, reflect that uh, casualty report should also, uh, should be used instead as a proper form of, of verification, because the DD two fourteen is not something that would be admissible or, or would not be appropriate. So, just replace um, uh, also be accepted to be to reflect used instead. Okay. And then further down, it's just more of a clarification than anything else. Um, it says, uh, Mr. Young explained that, uh, that as he looks back on recent events and current incidents with the armed forces, he would hope that individuals who died defending the country in the Cold War and the Gulf War would be recognized. And um, the clarification there would be to delete and the Gulf War, because the Gulf Wars would have been applicable in the past, and then substitute uh, instead um, who died defending the country in the Cold War uh, and in line of duty while serving could be recognized. It's, it's, again, it's just clarification. Okay, So delete uh, and the Gulf War and, and substitute in line of duty while serving. Okay, and then... Finally, on the next page, um, the second paragraph under C, Mr. Young said a lady who is a volunteer at the Victory Center. I'd just like to add um, uh, in parens there, that lady is Mrs. Edie Sweeney of um, Vero Beach, uh, just so she is identified with that. Okay. So that's the changes that I'd like for the uh, minutes for, for July 1. So it was accepted by you? Yeah, I, I, I would amend the, the, okay. the okay. changes as mentioned. Okay. Make a motion, we approve them. So, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Okay. Um, audience participation. Karen Bauer, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Karen Bauer, and I live at 11301 Roseland Road in Sebastian. And uh, I'm a member of the Treasure Coast chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and that's commonly called DAR. We are basically a woman's service organization, and we um, 
are dedicated to patriotism, education, honoring our Revolutionary War patriots, and uh, we also promote a lot of patriotism. Our members are all proven descendants of Revolutionary War patriots. So October 11th uh, is the 125th anniversary of DAR's founding, which is a big deal for us. Uh, it's going to be um, observed all over the country, and what what we would like to do, what we would like to propose, is that our day of service be on the 10th of October, because that's a Saturday, and I think we would have much more uh, participation from our membership. Since our members have the deepest regard and respect for our veterans because of the nature of DAR, we are really hoping that this day of service could be on at our memorial, at the Veterans Memorial Island Sanctuary. It's just a, a most lovely, beautiful place. I spent some time there last week and was just amazed at how beautifully the yards are kept. But what we are proposing is that we clean the plaques on the memorial, on each memorial. And what we would do, we would provide gloves Dawn dish soap, sponges, and uh, just soft bristle brushes so that we can really get into the nooks and crannies of those. And that would, to me, would be a great day of service for us. Um, the actual uh, water and hoses would be provided by facilities management. Okay, so they would put the hoses out and they would supply us with the water. Um, we are really hopeful that you will allow us to do our DAR day of service on the island. Um, we're just hopeful that that can happen. And I want to thank you. Uh, for your consideration in this matter. And also, I really want to thank this committee. You are doing an excellent job. That island is pristine. I spent some time out there last week, and I think we could actually contribute to the beauty of the island by just cleaning the plaques. Any questions? I just have one for Mr. Dexter. Um, and it's more of a logistics point of view. Um, is that supportable from the uh, city um, buildings and grounds um, uh, ability to, to do that? Yes, uh, supplying the hoses for them, and the hose bibs are already there. There's a couple, so. Okay. Okay, and from, uh, from, from your understanding of the manner for cleaning, is that... Uh, permissible? Yes. Okay. All right. And we would use Dawn, which is a very, very mild, and some uh, very soft bristle brushes. We just want to get in there and tender loving care and do our day of service. Okay. How many people do you think you'll have out there? So far, I'm thinking 10 to 15 mm -hmm. um, dedicated to, you know, that project. Right now, it's kind of difficult to get um, people to say, yes, I'll be in there mm -hmm. September, because some of them say, I don't know what I'm doing next week. Ask me later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm sure you run into that, too. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at. I would say at the moment, 10 to 15. Later on today at 1.30, we have the Veterans Council meeting, and we, we usually report on what happens at this meeting to, to that group. Do you want others to be out there with you, or, or is there, I mean, besides getting the okay from us, is there something we can do to help spread the word, so to speak? Or I would love for you to spread the word. Uh, it's, it's just the most wonderful place. Mm -hmm. And for us to be able to celebrate our 125th founding of DAR mm -hmm. on the island would be very special for us. Of course. And besides the, the 
little work detail. Is there a ceremony, or will you all? Is there going to be any? We would yeah. probably have a prayer around the memorial, uh-huh. uh, led by our chaplain. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we, we just really, it's going to be a fantastic mm-hmm. day for us if you will allow us to do it. Mm-hmm. What Here. day did you want to do it? Again? We October tenth. Okay. The Thank actual you. day of service was declared as uh, October 11th, because in 1890, that's when DAR was, you know, just became, and the founding is such a special thing for us. So, yeah, more questions, guys. (laughs) Karen, uh, just a couple of questions. First, all the credit for taking care of that beautiful island goes to the city of Vero Beach yes, and their maintenance department. They're the ones who really do the job. And we just kind excellent. of aid and a bit and so forth. <laughs> yes. But they should get But I'm sure without your direction, there would be a few hiccups in right. the road. <laughs> the other thing is, you said, um, you said the monuments. Mm-hmm. Now, are you indicating the... You know, the freestanding monuments that have all the plaques... And uh, like I said, I went out and spent some time, counted the monuments. And when our folks, when our volunteers would come in, uh, we would have them sign in and indicate special memorials that they would do. That mm-hmm. way we can keep up of who's doing what, move them through, and, and get the project done. You, you all going to have a scrubbing good time? We're going to have scrubbing good time if you guys allow it. <laughs> I think it's a marvelous project. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. My, my question kind of uh, parallels what Amelie says. So you uh, you have the 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 cenotaphs in the in the middle of the square, and yes. then you have around the perimeter each one of the uh, service. service monuments. Yes. And then in addition to those, you have about a half dozen. Uh, uh, monuments to the various conflicts that we had, as well as the, the Purple Hearts. Yes, so. I walked and looked at each. Okay, so each. You, wow, I'm, yeah. I'm impressed. That's that's a pretty big <laughs> undertaking. It certainly is. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Um, what was it? John, get him a lot of help from me. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. You know what happens when you get here? You, you, those thoughts go through your head. Um, anyway, I just wanted to say the DAR has been a part of the ceremonies yes. on Memorial Island forever. And I just want to say that's awesome. Uh, being as a, a historian of, of sorts myself, um, you appreciate the, the, the story to be told. Um, so I would, you know, I would just um, uh, ask as you speak with your, your members, if any of them, has any uh, contact with the families of those that are recognized on the island, uh, let me know because I'm always um, in search of additional information. Yes. Um, because we do still have a couple uh, veterans that um, we have to learn more about. So uh, that's there. Okay. Um, any other questions about the. Uh, the you memory? may have said, and I just missed it, but what, it's October 10th. What time are you yeah, going to. Time frame? We're, we'd like to start at 8 o'clock in the morning because obviously it uh-huh. could still be hot. We are also going to furnish cold drinking water for participants. We will have a cooler full of drinking water. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Um, I make right, a motion. And, for- and Rob, you're aware of what will be going on. So uh, from a city. Uh, perspective there's no other um activities on that weekend that would be impacted okay the other final thing is just procedurally if you would give uh, rob the form that to fill out um, and then it'll be approved by us and it'll go to the city manager and that'll be all uh recorded for prosperity okay and will i get that form and is there anything you need from us uh just the hose and water and uh, that would be facilities management. And outside of that, we're going to take care of everything else. Okay, very good. Thank so you so much for coming. Thank you. When the form do, comes back. Do we, uh, do we? Well, we, I was just thinking the next meeting will actually have the written request. We I think it's it September 2nd, your next meeting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that when the vote would be? 
Well, we uh, we can make a motion now to approve it. I was going to say, we can go ahead and approve it today. Well, I would I love so. that. And so then fast. that would just be a matter of um, a lot of our signatures. Just getting the paperwork. I would certainly move okay. that we approve the day of caring for the DAR, especially at the 125th anniversary. Very exciting I'll, I'll for us. Motion. Okay. You second? What's John? All in favor? Very good. 100%. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. taking the initiative. That's fantastic. Yes. So <laughs> thank you. It. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, moving to any other new business? I don't see any. Okay. Moving to old business. The resolution for um, the rules authorized uses and master plan was submitted to the city council with our recommendation and it was approved and I was just looking for the for the uh, it's resolution 2015-23 and that was provided to everybody and it was signed the 21st of July so thank you everybody I appreciate all of the effort and energy that went into it um, for those watching, um, a lot of the credit needs to go to um, Peggy Lyons mm -hmm. and, and the staff there really did a fantastic job. And uh, Don and, and Rob and everybody that contributed to that, I thought was it was really uh, something special. Um, and it was exceptionally well received by the city council. It, I was, I was really uh, pleased. It, it was. It's nice to uh, have uh, the full support there. Um, as you look at the uh, at the um, uh, sheet, the resolution, it was a hundred percent, and uh, I, I'm almost positive Mr. Olds would have proved as well. He was absent, but everybody there concurred with it, and I think it's just uh, an outstanding accomplishment. Okay. Um, Mr. Dexter, can we learn a little bit more about the update for the Lest We Forget Monument? Yes, we can. Okay. And I have some production pictures here that just came to me late Ooh. last week. Nice. So the, the rough outline is done. They still haven't uh, finished the polishing work yet, but it's moving along nicely. Um, I did not get an update on the delivery schedule, but I would imagine in the next three or four weeks we should have it here. I'm not sure how long it takes for them to polish everything up, but. No, fantastic. And it's, it's an exact. Um, it's pretty darn close. Yeah. I've, of course, all we had was that picture from the newspaper in 1987, so for the we scaled yeah, it the best we could to, <laughs> to match it, and, and uh, it's, it's very, very close. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed. And the and the, the tricky part was finding the granite that was pretty close, mm -hmm. and so we what we have there. It, Wouldn't you know? Uh, you won't be able to tell for sure until it comes. But the, from the pictures that we got of the samples, it it looked like a very very close match. Okay, and did and they, did they discuss? I think we had talked about. Um, how they're going to attach it, whether there's going to be a epoxy or some other... Yeah, they'll definitely have epoxy. There's a possibility that they'll put a dowel in okay. to help support it, but um, we'll... we'll right. I think he wanted to wait until he got it in and then just see exactly how it's... And tell me again, this is who, who's doing the work? Feldner uh, Studios in Felsmere, F-E-L-D-N-E-R. Feldner Studios mm -hmm. in, in... Where? Felsmere. In Felsmere, okay. okay. And they're not actually cutting the stone there. He had to t send that out to one of his uh, sources of material because it's with the odd angle cuts on it. It's a little bit more than what he typically does. Mm -hmm. But he'll do the final um, touch-ups and polishing on it, and then of course the installation. And so we're looking. This is this is by the end of August. Um, I would be optimistic that the end of August. Uh, you wow. know, it's September for sure. I would think so. Okay. Before Veterans Day. Yeah. Well, b well before Veterans Day, we should be. <laughs> okay in good shape fantastic okay um any more word on uh the cenotaph for mr doles i uh contacted the uh, plaque maker again late last week because i hadn't heard from him for a couple weeks and they apologized or my email got lost in the shuffle when i initially sent it up to him uh, in early july 
So it's in production now, and he's going to try and move it up in, in the assembly process or in the production process because they, they felt bad about losing my email originally. So I would expect we'd have that in the next um, uh, month or so. Okay. All right. And... Uh... The stag horn fur. Mm -hmm. I think. Did you get a copy of the uh, the picture? Yes. And then, yes. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. We prepared a uh, Nanette prepared a, a letter for the mayor to sign. And did you guys get a copy of that too in your packet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that is still uh, uh, being worked on. They haven't gotten a copy yet, but okay. They, once it's prepared and ready, they will. Okay. So we have, we have a we thought it'd be good for the uh, mayor to send a letter of uh, thanks to uh, Miss Sweeney for the donation, and okay. so that's that's in production. Um, and what and I, what we would like to do, if the committee agrees with me, is also send a letter directly from our committee, uh, mm -hmm. expressing our appreciation. Um, um, when I spoke with her, because I, I didn't want it to pass with just you know uh, it appearing on the island, because it's it's such a, a beautiful thing. Uh, she said um, that she would like everybody to know that uh, she wanted to give it in honor of her late husband, Robert C. Sweeney. And he was a boss, boss, boss Swain's mate? Bosun's mate. Bosun's, Bosun's mate. Bosun's. Uh, first class in World War II, and, and he passed uh, in September of 96. And they came from Big Pine Key to Vero, and she was she's a World War II Navy veteran as well. Mm -hmm. And um, for those watching, if you go to Memorial Island, it's in the large oak to the east of the World War II um, uh, memorial that's mm -hmm. there. And um, I tell you what, uh, I, having having looked at uh, different uh, staghorn ferns, that that mm -hmm. the way that it's um, displayed there was fantastic. It, it's a it's a gorgeous uh, fern. Mm -hmm. so. And also, thanks to your chair here, um, Mr. Young donated a um, cardboard palm to be placed where there was an oleander just behind the Pearl Harbor monument that was done. The oleander had died, and, and he had a very nice one that, uh, that we got and planted in there. So thank you, uh, Mr. Young, for that. Thank you. I'm glad. It, it will grow and prosper. Okay. So we got the palm. To very good. Okay. It, it's, uh, I think... If you visit the island and you talk to anybody that walks there, they just want to contribute to it. It's it's a place that's inspirational. So um, I want to say thanks to that. Okay. Okay. Um, the Korean uh, War Armistice Ceremony is the next point on, on the agenda. And I would just like to uh, reiterate for the folks that um, didn't have the opportunity to attend. Um, thank you to the city council, um, uh, Mayor Winger, Jay Kramer, um, Pilar Turner all came, as well as Commissioner Flesher from the, uh, from the county. We had probably 20 Korean veterans attend. Um, and the highlight of my day was sitting on the benches, and there was a Korean veteran with his wife next to me. And he, he said, you know what? <laughs> this is the first patriotic ceremony I've been to since Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> 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 and I go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it, it, it just, it's, 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 it's staggering to, to, to listen to the, to the mm -hmm. folks that go. And there was a, one other individual who was a local resident, Mr. Keene, and he says, yeah, my brother was on board the USS Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so uh, uh, we have probably, I said 50, somebody else said 100. We had a good turnout. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just want to say, uh, you, you look at the community and you say, is this supported? And uh, Dolores came and sang for, for gratis. Uh, Michael Hyde came, played the bagpipes for gratis. Um, uh, Duke Scales came and played the bugle for taps gratis. Um, you had the Boy Scouts Troop 558 show up with bottles of water gratis. Uh, um, 
I was trying to recall, and you have our own member here, uh, John and Carla did the program out of their, uh, you know, out of their hard labor, and uh, the water was provided. So, um, I just, um, I'm just it's a lot of cooperation. You know, it, it, it's it's magnificent, and yeah. and Rob, thanks for the city being on call with the uh, emergency services. Uh, the only the only note to self for the future is most of those guys. Uh, it was a hike to get in from the uh, from the from the parking area, and um, I'll have to you know, underline underscore you know golf carts for the future you know, because that's 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 critical when you when you do those things. But um, thanks to everybody, I, I appreciate it. Okay. okay. Uh, any 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 other input from and the and the publicity turned out very well. Uh, yes, we, it did. We, the newspapers supported us um, in addition. So, if folks are interested, you don't have to wait to Memorial Day or Veterans Day or any other holiday. If you have a reunion, Veterans Reunion, or you want to have a memorial on the island for a veteran, you're welcome and encouraged to do so. Okay, uh, next point of order um, for, for uh, number seven, uh, Chairman's Matters Cenotaph update. I chuckled to myself because <coughs> when I went out to the island, we posted medallions for all of the Korean veterans. And as we were posting the medallions for the Korean veterans, I, I realized that the last time we updated the cenotaphs, the cenotaph for Mr. Keene and the cenotaph for Mr. Henry swapped locations. <laughs> so, so Don, I just, I, I know you'll have to, you'll have to shoot me because I didn't catch it when the guys were putting out the cenotaphs, but the the maps will need to be updated to reflect uh, basically. Uh, Mr. Keene was right along the, the sidewalk going in, and now he's one row further to the west. And, and uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Henry was one row to the west, and now he's beside the sidewalk. So um, uh, that's on me. So. Do you have a markup? I, I do. I, I have it for you, and, and I'll give one to also to, to Rita so she's got it for record. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, moving to the next point. The Veterans Council <clears throat> Community Awareness Video. Um, clarification is needed there. The Veterans Council did a survey last year, and they found out that there was a very small percentage of the population that understood what the Veterans Council was all about. Um, so the Community Foundation provided us, provided the Veterans Council, a grant of $5,000 to do a video. Um, last Friday, I took the opportunity to um, be on the Memorial Island and speak about the Veterans Council and what it does as an introductory. It's about a three-minute video. And then I realized that I probably got the horse before the cart and so I'm coming to plead <laughs> to the committee to endorse the, uh, uh, the, us doing the introductory for the video for Veterans Council um, there on the island. So any questions? As long as you're not selling anything. Like it's it. fine. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's no commercial. It's all good. It's, yeah, yeah, no harm, no foul. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, next. The, Sir, can you who yeah. who, who uh, where was the grant from? Uh, the, the community foundation. Community foundation. It was a micro grant for five thousand dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, the, the the driver there is um, the it's to be completed by I think the end of September. And um, just for everybody's uh, 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 kind of heads up, it'll be something that will be made available to the public, uh, kind of like a public. Uh, service announcement that will talk about uh, what the Veterans uh, Council does, and and one of the one of the points there is um, holding uh, recognition and uh, patriotic ceremonies on the island. 
Uh, so it's, it's, it's something that uh, uh, the, the Veterans Councils from the day one has, has sought to protect as well. So. Do we know about how long this video will be? Say again? Do we know about the time? Three minutes. Three minutes? Yes, it's a short one. Yeah, three minutes. Is it something that maybe could be played on the uh, city Website. Web, uh, not I, just I the website, on TV, to... on the uh, yeah. station as well during downtime? Yeah, so. we, we can check on that. Yeah. We can make it available, and then uh, mm -hmm. if, if uh, the, the uh, city um, council feels that it's, it's good, I, I think it'll be appropriate, but um, we'll make it available to them. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I think. Okay, uh, so let's uh, move the highlights for um, <coughs> July uh, for the veterans on the island. Uh, if we could, Joel, if you would uh, read about Mr. Thomas. Yeah, Corporal Bobby Gene Thomas was an airman from Sebastian assigned to the 509th Bomber Wing, 715th Bomber Squadron. He was lost at sea when his C-124 aircraft transport aircraft safely ditched in the Atlantic. Bobby was a passenger. The aircraft was serial number 490244, with the designation of N as in November 43173C as in Charlie. A total of 53 men, the crew and passengers, were on the way from Loring Air Force Base, Maine, to Mildenhall, which is an RAF base in England. A fire from a crate was reported. A B-29 from Mildenhall responded to the distress call. It found the survivors safely in life rafts. When the ships finally arrived to the scene, only some charred crates and a partially deflated life raft were located. Despite the largest air and sea search to that time, no further recovery was made. Brigadier General Paul Cullen was one of the missing. Soviet subs and surface vessels were active in the area. The exact fate of the men is speculation. All were lost and presumed dead. Bobby was born April 18, 1930, and died in service on March 23, 1951. He lost his life at 20 years of age. His Vero Beach High School Arrowhead yearbook, quote, reflects a carefree youth, worry, care. If they were the only causes for death, I would never die, unquote. He was in the band for three years from sophomore through his senior year. A search of the 1945 Florida Census and the 1940 U.S. Census was not successful in obtaining further information. Recent analysis of the loss of the Globemaster and the men aboard is found in March 26, 2011, Air Force Times article uh, titled, Planes 1951 Disappearance, Still a Mystery. Corporal Thomas Cenotaph is located in column E, row 7. Additional work is needed, and he was highlighted on July 7th. Thanks. Fred G. Coleman, World War II, Korea. Fred D., I'm sorry. Fred D. Coleman is one of the veterans included in the dedication of Veterans Memorial Island Sanctuary. He is among those who served in the World War II and the Korean War. The Press Journal article reflects that he was from Vero Beach. Fred is among those whose accounts remain elusive. Various resources have not provided a clear picture so far. Stephen Coleman's Seven, I'm sorry, seven Coleman's are listed in the World War II Army casualties for Florida. None of them are Fred D. Coleman, 32. Coleman's are listed in the Korean War, killed in action, missing in action, non-battle list on the Korean War Project website. None are from Florida. World War II Army enlistment records provide a possible Fred Coleman. He was born in Florida in 1920 with serial number 345 Four zero four eight six. He enlisted in Camp Blanding on January 19, 1943, and was a black man. He resi his residence was Alachua County. Thirteen Fred Comans are in the 1940 Federal Census of Florida. Five are not likely of military age. Two are potential leads, Fred C. Coleman from Polk County and Fred R. Coleman from Duval County. A Google search of Fred D. Coleman, World War II, 1940-1945, indicates 78 World War II records for Alfred Coleman, but there is a reason for optimism. Visitors of Memorial Island have left commemorative items on his cemetery. It is likely he has family still in our community. 
Research of his account remains ongoing. Information is needed from friends or relatives that can help. His cenotaph is located in column E, row 3. He was highlighted on Janu uh, July 14th. Okay. Technical Sergeant Edward G. Courtney, taken prisoner December 16, 1945. Edward Courtney is another veteran that remains a standing puzzle. He is identified among those honored in 1964. The Press Journal article calling for more veteran information indicates he was from Vero Beach. Two potential service members have merit. Technical Sergeant Edward G. Rock Courtney was a World War II soldier taken prisoner in Germany. He was captured on December 16, 1944. These men were Battle of the Bulge casualties. Courtney was held in Gulag 6. The camp was liberated in June of 1945. Another possible veteran is Edward L. Courtney. His service number was 313-6556. He is listed in the U.S. roster of World War II dead, 1939-1945. A third individual, Ed Courtney of Roseland, Florida, is not the veteran. Edward Courtney's cenotaph is located in column D, row 7. This account is still a work in progress. Help is needed from the public. Courtney's cenotaph is located in column D, row 7. His search was highlighted on July the 21st. Okay. John? Sure. First Lieutenant Stanley Broxton, Jr., U.S. Army, killed in service November 12, 1958. Stanley Broxton, Jr. is the eldest son of Stanley and Mary Lu Lucille Killian Broxton. He was born in 1935. He attended Vero Beach High School and completed high school education in Tallahassee. The, the Broxton family dates back to the turn of the century in Wabasso. Stanley, Jr. graduated from Florida A&M University. Stanley received a Reserve Officers Training Corps a commission in the in artillery from Florida A and M University. His serial number was five three zero zero four seven seven three. He was also a member of the Military Honor Society, Pershing Rifles. He married shortly thereafter and did training in Fort Bliss, Texas, home of the U.S. Army Field Artillery School. Upon completion, he was assigned to the Knight Hercules Missile Battalion in Fort Devens. Massachusetts. Lieutenant Broxton was mortally injured at the at 25 years of age in an ordnance explosion. He was evacuated and died at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. His service represents the third generation of Broxton soldiers. His father fought in World War II and his grandfather, John Broxton, was in the Spanish-American War. All are buried alongside in Wabasso Cemetery Plot. His home is located on the road named in honor of his family. John Braxton was a brick mason for A.B. Michael, one of the Indian River County Citrus Pioneers. Stanley Braxton, Jr. was survived by his wife, Lucille Martin Braxton, and two children, Brenda and Michael. Barry V. Braxton of Sebastian and um, Car... Uh, Caroline Ann Broxton Peppers of Cross City, Florida, are siblings. His cenotaph is located in column B, row 8 in the sanctuary. He was highlighted on July 28th. I would, again, just ask for folks that if you know of folks that um, are relatives or friends of anybody in the um, cenotaphs just to get back with me uh, as as we do research you can see just from some of the accounts um, there are names that are more common than other names and then it becomes a process of trying to use multiple references to uh, uh, narrow down who exactly it is and fortunately there are we've gone through 50 cenotaphs now and out of 50 
the confidence level of probably 47 out of 50 is nearly 100%. Uh, there are three, however, that are still uh, names to be uh, names to be researched, and we would, we could use any assistance with that. Okay, um, one final note. Uh, last um, uh, meeting, uh, Colonel Coons provided a, uh, a check to the uh, committee for a thousand dollars to assist in the refurbishment of the Lest We Forget Monument, and he will be providing that check also to the uh, a replica of it to the city council on the 18th of August. So, if you're interested in that, you're welcome to attend. Okay. Um, anything else from the committee, Barb? John. Well, on a, on a personal note, I, I'm going to a, a reunion of the Marines I was with in Vietnam uh, at the end of August, and uh, we had 521 Marines and corpsmen killed in our battalion while, while the battalion was in Vietnam, and they're dedicating a monument to, to those, and we'll be reading the names of, of, the, of the Marines and corpsmen that were killed. And uh, it's one of the la and at the Marine Corps Museum in Quantico, there's a a path called the Chessie Puller Memorial Walkway or whatever, and so we got one of the last little peel-offs that where there will be a monument. And we oftentimes talk about Arlington and some of the things here, and we'll, we'll of course, visit Arlington where many of them are buried, and and uh, then we'll go to the evening parade, they call it, at 8th and I, where the Marine Corps headquarters is, to see the uh, silent drill team and the, and the Marine Corps band. And it's just one of those, you know, oftentimes I think about those guys when we're doing this, and uh, and uh, I guess now that we're getting to be old Marines, it, it'll be good to have a reunion with those and, and also see Arlington and some of the uh, similar things that our town has here on, on Memorial Island. Joel? No, sir. Um, uh, two points real quick. Uh, I went to a Veterans Advisory Committee meeting with Congressman Posey uh, uh, earlier in the week, and um, it was mentioned that the state of Florida had appropriated $1.3 million for a veteran's um, memorial or a veteran structure in Brevard County. And I thought that was something that was uh, unique. And I'm just looking at the how much we've invested here locally, and, and maybe there's potential in the future where we can look to the state for assistance as well. Um, and then the... Um, comment in regards to uh, the Marines in, in, uh, in D.C. I, I'm a soldier, <laughs> and, and I, I have, uh, there's no, no service classier than the United States Marine Corps, and that's from a soldier, so <laughs> my hat's off to you. Uh, just incredible. Uh, I'm glad that we have the United States Marine Corps, and uh, I do, I would be negligent not to mention that uh, two days ago was the birthday for the United States Coast Guard. So all of those that are uh, belong to the Coast Guard, my dad was in the Coast Guard. God bless you and congratulations. It's the 225th birthday for the United States Coast Guard. Emily? No, all set. Okay. That's all we have. I appreciate it. A motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. The next meeting.